There's a report there today in the media about a case at the WRC. It's a shocking case at the WRC. It involves a young lady, a masseuse, who had her pay cut after refusing her boss's demands for sexual services. But she has won, and this is a notable feature of this case, she has won €91,000 from her employer uh, under the Protection of uh, Whistleblowers Act. And this case is notable because for the first time ever since the legislation was enacted, the maximum amount, five years wages, has been awarded to uh, an employee. So this is the first time. Her wages at the salon amounted to 70 euros a day, but she was told that she would lose clients if she did not provide additional services of a sexual nature. She was a vulnerable young woman. I think she was from, uh, I think she was a student from a non-national student. She was sacked after refusing to provide the sexual services to her male boss. She's been awarded 91,000 euros. The male boss and his partner didn't appear at the WRC, didn't defend the case. But this is the first case where a tribunal or where the WRC has ordered a whistleblower receive five years pay in compensation for penalisation. And that's the Protected Disclosures Act 2014. It is the maximum award that could be awarded under the legislation. And this is the first time that that's ever happened. Her total compensation package arising from other breaches of the law in the case amounted to €102,550. It's the second highest sum awarded to a claimant uh, this year before the WRC. She started work at the massage parlour in 2019. She found that its clients were asking her for additional services of a sexual nature. The couple then running the parlour took her to dinner and explained that she could indeed do as the clients were asking, she said. They also identified specific services and told her what price she should charge. Her wages at the salon were 70 euros a day in cash. The managers, an Irish man and a non-Irish woman, told her she could say no, but they could assure her that she wouldn't get more clients. If she refused, the worker told the WRC. After the conversation, she began to provide limited sexual services but came under pressure to go further despite telling her bosses she didn't want to do it. In fact, they pressured her to expand her range of services. The male manager also routinely made her give him free massages and would push the boundaries, pressuring her to touch him intimately or provide him with sexual services, the worker said. The worker said that she refused his demands, but in response, the woman manager became rude, dismissive and derogatory towards her and rostered her for less work. Eventually, her bosses refused to pay her unless she saw at least four clients a day, leaving her unpaid on multiple occasions. She returned home from, uh, or she returned from a fortnight's holiday in early 2022 to discover that she was off the roster. She was told by her bosses that there was no more work for her and she could find another job. Her employers, former employers, made no appearance at the WRC when the hearing came on in July. So the barrister representing the worker, the complainant, pointed out that sex work was no longer an offence since the passage of the Criminal Law Sexual Offences Act 2017, but that it was still a crime to run a brothel or to compel or coerce a person into providing sexual services and to profit as a result. So the concern, according to the adjudicator, as to the wrongdoing does not require proof that wrongdoing was actually committed. And for the avoidance of doubt, he said, nothing in this decision should be construed as making any such finding. 
the adjudicator was satisfied that there was a direct link between the worker's refusal to provide sexual services and the acts of penalisation and said the male manager's persistent demands for sexual services were of even greater concern. Remember, under the Protected Disclosures Act of 2014, a person, an employee, is protected from dismissal or from penalisation for having made a protected disclosure. And this particular case was made, uh, this particular claim was brought under the Protected Disclosures Act, or at least part of it was. There was other aspects of it that were not brought under the Protected Disclosures Act. And that's how the amount awarded for this lady came to a the ninety one thousand euros which was five years salary and then there was other payments on top of that other penalties for the employer the adjudicator said he could only reasonably conclude that the man's conduct was further penalization in the form of coercion intimidation and harassment or unfair treatment of the worker for having made her protected disclosure he also uh, noted that the employee was a non-european Union, a uh, non European Union national who was working to support her studies and did not speak English as her first l- language. And he noted that she was an exceptionally vulnerable worker. So, in the present case and most exceptional case, according to the adjudicator, he found that the nature and extent of penalisation were of such an egregious nature as to merit an award of compensation at the maximum level permitted by the Act. And remember, the maximum level permitted by the Act is five years' wages. So he awarded the worker €7,000 for uh, loss of earnings following her sacking under the Unfair Dismissals Act. He ordered the massage parlour to pay her €91,000 as a tax-free compensation lump sum equivalent to five years' gross wages for the worker. He also awarded €1,400 for failure to provide a contract in writing and awarded €700 in compensation for dismissal without notice in breach of the Minimum Notice in Terms of Employment Act. And he also awarded a further €2,450 for the non-provision of paid annual leave in breach of the Organisation of Working Time Act 1997. So that is an expensive award, a total of €102,500, I think, is the total uh, of all the awards. The difficulty now, I suppose, may be for the employee, the successful complainant, to enforce that award. That's another day's work, but I note that she has a solicitor and barrister representing her at the hearing and therefore I hope obviously that they will pursue the matter further and will be able to uh, put that uh, award, substantial award, into effect. I don't know whether the badge parlour owner business is going to appeal it to the Labour Court or what's going to happen but that is a significant award but the notable feature of this is a the salacious sort of nature of the complaint and the activity that the vulnerable employee was being invited to or encouraged or coerced to engage in and b the fact that this case is the first time that the maximum amount under the protected or protected disclosures act 2014 uh, it's the first time that the award maximum award of five years wages for a complainant has been awarded hope you find this video useful and you might give it the thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel if you're watching on youtube if you are listening to my podcast on itunes or on spotify or wherever you might listen to podcasts i'd appreciate if you left a review thanks a lot